Hey little sisters, it's Tiff, I'm back. Welcome back, and if you're new here, welcome. If you don't know me, my name is Tiffany Nicole, and I am holistically Tiffany, or at least trying to be, right? Today's video is, I wanted to kind of talk about um, my struggles with ADHD. If you didn't know, in the summer of 2023, I was just diagnosed with ADHD as an adult. And um, ever since learning about my diagnosis, um, I've been able to kind of like get a handle on my shortcomings, I guess. So I just kind of wanted to kind of talk about, you know, um, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I do have a bunch of notes if you hear like papers shuffling and I got my phone. So because it's really hard for me to remember things. Um, so yeah, let's just jump into it. So prior to me being diagnosed, you know, I always kind of thought that I was like a little, um, scatterbrained or um, quirky. You know, there were certain things that I did or did not do um, that I just thought were personality flaws. And I guess you can say that they're still personality flaws, but, you know, I thought they were personality flaws nonetheless. And it wasn't until 2023 when I was actually seeing a new therapist at the time and she just basically stopped me in mid-sentence and said, hey, Tiffany, have you ever been evaluated for ADHD? And I'm like, no. And she's like, oh my gosh, because you're like this. So I guess I, I'm just like kind of all over the place and my conversations are really convoluted. And that's something that I did notice as I got older, um, you know, just kind of like, it's hard for me to like stay on topic when I'm having conversation. So, you know, it was just something that I noticed, but like I said, I thought it was just me. And once she said that, and once she referred me to the place that did my evaluation, I was like, okay, this is something. So I, um, went ahead, but I, you know what, I'm going to back up a little bit. And, so I just want to tell you guys just like a little bit about me before I ended up getting um, diagnosed, but, and I am going to look at my notes because again, I, I'm so sorry, but, um, you know, I was really impulsive, very forgetful, um, scatterbrained. I could literally be in the middle of a conversation and legit lose my train of thought like mid-sentence. And it's because when I'm having a conversation, like even now, even though these words are coming out of my mouth, I'm already thinking about like the next topic or symptom that I want to talk to you guys about. So that has always been a struggle for me. And, um, you know, I suffer from like lack of concentration. I huge procrastinator. I'm not the most tidy person in the world. And this whole time I was thinking like, oh my God, because I remember when I was younger, my mom, oh my God, she would always yell at me <laughs> because like I never like straightened my room. And so, um, you know, being undiagnosed is just one of those things. And when I realized that like, because it's not that I don't like being tidy. I actually like being tidy. It's just that in the middle of me tidying, I get completely overwhelmed or bored and I don't want to do it anymore. Oh, I was extremely unreliable in the sense that when I was working, because I am, oops, sorry, I am a stay-at-home mom and um, I've been home with my kids for about seven years now. And I'm not going to lie to you. When I was working, I was perpetually late and it did not matter if I woke up early because I would get so distracted, like everything distracts me. So that was another thing that I like struggled with. And then, um, time management, you know, that goes into like my reliability, my time management, I still struggle with it, but I am getting better now that I know exactly like what my issues are. I, I'm, I'm getting better. I was just really um, 
just really all over the place. And, you know, even like sitting down in order for me to sit still in a chair, I have to like consciously be aware of my body. And I think the only reason why I'm able to do that now is because I've been practicing mindfulness for so long, but I would literally just sit and like shake my legs. And I remember my husband would always, you know, I'd be sitting like on the couch or something and my legs are going a mile a minute. And he's like, baby, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. What? And he's like, you're, you're going to shake the house down. And I'm like, oh, sorry, because it's unconscious for me. I had no idea that I was even doing it. So yeah, I literally like thought that there was something wrong with me. Like me as a person, like I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not calm enough. I'm not, you know, I can't concentrate enough. So that also kind of fed into the negative self-talk that I would always um, bestow on myself. But yeah, so when my therapist recommended and referred me to my psychological eval, the folks that evaluated me, I even just thinking, like even before going through the process, I was like, okay, like this is so it, it it makes sense. So now I want to kind of talk about the process. So it was a pretty long process. My first appointment, I believe, was like an hour and a half, which I get bored so easily. So it was like torture. Don't get me wrong. The psychologist that was evaluating me, he was so sweet, so cool. Like it wasn't against him at all. It's just me. Like I just get so bored. So I like, oh, that's another thing I do. <laughs> if I'm talking to you and like, I'll be like, yeah, uh-huh. And then I'll be like, wait, what? Because I'm, I zonk out. Like it, it's just the weirdest thing. But anyway, back to, I'm sorry, I'm trying to keep this ah, concise, but so back to the testing process. So there were three main tests that they evaluated me on, and they are the Connors test, the Pi test, and also the Waze test. And basically this, these tests, like, I, I don't want to bore you like with the details. Um, I'll leave some links below that'll give you more information about exactly what all of these tests are, what they entail, you know, what they're, what they measure. But yeah, it was, it was a uh, brutal, like kind of going through it. But, um, I was tested over the course of a about, I, I believe it was four sessions altogether. And then um, in order for him to go over my results and kind of like uh, measure everything, it took, it took a, a while. I think it was like six weeks, like four to six weeks or something like that. I know it took a while for me to get the actual diagnosis. And then that was another appointment where I went in and he just kind of like, like thoroughly went through the report. And I saw like all of my, I have a copy of my report right here, <laughs> but I saw all of my, um, where I measured, you know, it had like numbers on here and what it broke down, like all of these tests combined kind of broke down my verbal comprehension, my perceptual reasoning, working memory, processing speed, and that was the last one. So then it goes through like my um, actual conclusion and the summary and recommendations for treatment. So um, I have been confirmed attention deficit hyperactivity disorder with a moderate combined presentation as a root cause of presenting concerns. So um, that's what it was. And basically, it was his recommendation that I undergo, you know, I finish my therapy, which I am, and that I look into possibly getting into EMDR, CBT therapy, and DBT therapy. So again, I will link all of this below if you guys want to like read more about it or if this sounds familiar and you just kind of want to, you know, just get more information to see if possibly you could be suffering from the same thing. So the things that I do now to kind of circumvent my shortcomings. So number one, my best friend lately has been to-do lists, checklists, and like little appointment books. 
even as a stay-at-home mom and, you know, pretty much especially like COVID and all that, I pretty much only took my kids to like their doctor's appointments and things like that. And as everything started to open back up, I noticed, and this was before I got um, diagnosed, but I was like, wait to my kids' doctor's appointments. Like, you know what I mean? Like, but yeah, like it's just hard for me to get going. And then as I'm getting going, I, did I, am I on a tangent? I am on a tangent. Focus. So yeah to-do lists. Yes, to-do lists, checklists, um, just writing things down in multiple places, as well as putting appointments like in my phone, getting alerts, everything. I really need that because if not, I am going to forget and it is not on purpose. It's just that my mind is so all over the place. I am constantly thinking about at least 10 things <laughs> at once, it seems. I've also realized that for me, it is easier for me to break down like tasks or chores or whatever I have to do into smaller tasks if possible. But yeah, so I just try to like take big tasks and just kind of break them down. So like if I have like laundry, I try not to let it get overwhelmed. I still kind of struggle with that because I think I just hate folding clothes in general, but I mean, it has to be done. But yeah, what I do is I'll just make sure I try not to let them pile up so it's like an overwhelming mountain of laundry. And I just try to put everything away. And then even with like tidying. So like, instead of me sitting down and like cleaning my whole house, because I I'm telling you right now, I can't do that. So I have to do it like in sections. So like right now I'll like vacuum the floor and um, vacuum our area rug. And then maybe I'll like a few hours later, I'll like kind of like wipe, you know, the glass tables or do whatever. I can't just sit and dedicate myself to cleaning. I'm not going to even lie to you. I just can't. That is definitely a flaw of mine. So I have to like work around my shortcomings. You know what I mean? I hope that makes sense. Oh, another thing. I have definitely learned to not overcommit myself. Let me tell you, I would be the one that's like, oh yeah, girl, I'll do this. And oh yeah, absolutely. I'll do that. And then when it comes time to do it, I'm like, I, I will flake because I'm like, I really cannot like the energy, like me dragging myself out of the house. So now that I understand like the way that my mind works, if I am going to commit to something that I can be reliable enough to show up because I want to be a woman of my word. So if I say I'm going to be there, I'm going to be there. If I have any inkling or if I'm like, uh, then I just say automatically say no. It saves like a lot of like heartache. It saves a lot of like irritation, like on my part, on the person that I'm flaking on's part. Like I just try to not over commit myself. So another thing that I definitely think was really important with me kind of like going through this um, ADHD journey, like learning about it and going through it, but like just taking care of myself and just kind of implementing that self-care because it is so easy for me to get overwhelmed. There are so many times where I need to stop, take a step back and just kind of have that me time, especially with me being here with the kids 24 seven. Um, I have prioritized my self-care and I know, I know like self-care, ooh, ooh, ooh. but I'm telling you guys. And as a matter of fact, I ended up making a checklist for myself and I was like, Hey, why don't I share it with my little sisters? So I'm going to leave a link to the um, checklist down below. If you want to like check it out. I just wanted to kind of make this video just in case, like if there are some certain things that you've been thinking about when it comes to like whether you're um, suffering from ADHD, if you have this uh, disability, I just want to number one, be 
open and honest about it. But number two, like let somebody know out there you're not alone. And if you do think that you could be suffering from this disorder, I definitely recommend reaching out to your doctor. If you're in therapy, reach out to your therapist, talk to your counselor, your psychiatrist, your psychologist, whoever it is that you see, whatever professional that you trust or have a good rapport with, because I'm telling you, Ever since I've been diagnosed, not only has things just fallen into place in regards to like making sense, but also it takes me back to childhood, to my teenage years and just how difficult it was for me, even as an adult going back to college, just the way that I would present myself with my schoolwork even to this day, I still struggle because I'm back in college, but even to this day, I do kind of struggle with procrastination. Now, I have gotten better. I have improved with that. I don't wait until the absolute last minute to like get my work done, but I still kind of struggle with like procrastination and being overwhelmed as a whole. I always thought that it was just me or there was something wrong with me or I was weird. Well, I am weird, but I, <laughs> I just now knowing and having an answer and being able to get help for it opened my eyes and made me appreciate myself more. So I'm learning to love all parts of me, including the parts that I'm not so proud of. So with that said, little sisters, I am going to hop off. Thank you so much for watching. If you like my content, if you like this video, please give it a big old thumbs up and share it if you want to share it with like, or send it to someone that you think may be suffering from ADHD because I literally had no idea. And then now that I have this diagnosis, I'm like, oh. This makes perfect sense. So, all right, little sisters. Well, I love you so much. Thank you so much for watching. And I will catch you guys in the next one. <laughs> Bye.